well, sex after you've had a baby. I mean, my husband's solution was just to go off and have it with somebody else. Which is a bit of a sad story, I yeah, suppose. But I saw common. it. It does happen, doesn't it? A lot of men, I think, go off their wives when they're pregnant. They just don't find the whole thing attractive. And I think some, the whole find, some think it's disturbing. wonderful. Yeah. And others mm. find it quite... Frightening. Lovely. Yeah, because yeah. this is the, the slim little wife at the birth. Married. I kind of wish my husband hadn't been there at the birth because I think the whole scene, he found it so traumatic. He said it was like a scene from Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really want to go anywhere near me afterwards. So you think that the birth scene I think it was changed his, his view of you me. As a he didn't see me being. as a sexual being anymore. I was suddenly this you know, mother who was about to explode and leak blood everywhere, you know, yeah. I mean, it must have been very traumatic for no, him. So yes, and it's like when they see you breastfeeding, suddenly it's like, you're, you know, your tits are kind of like a sexual acid and everything, and suddenly they're sort of, they're milk bottles, yeah. they yeah. sort of see it a yeah. different Some way. So what's the answer off, then? Should we sort of like say, don't watch the birth and I keep it all so. a mystery? I think they'd like they used to. We kind of now... Are, uh, expect them to be there, don't we? Mm. And perhaps it should be their option if they don't want to. Yeah. Mm. But, then, but then you see, if my husband hadn't been there, I'd have been upset. I'd have felt that he didn't want to be there, mm. yeah. which is true, he wouldn't have, you know. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think you need. There, don't look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less what my husband did. I'd just look up and hold my hand. But yeah, I mean, I guess what, yeah, the thing is, isn't it, that the scenes, you know, and if you end up in stirrups and with episiotomies oh, and, exactly. you know, vacuums and even with a baby coming out, out, you know, that, covered in, like, the blood and the mucus and all that. I mean, even that's probably a little bit sort of scary, even if you haven't yeah. seen it kind of arrive. And I think they're a bit daunted. I mean, it is that old thing, too, you know, if it gets that big. <laughs> Is it going to get yeah. that? How, yeah. how can I, mean, I possibly <laughs> compete? <laughs> but maybe there, I think there's some truth in that as well. I mean, worry, I mean, I think I worried about how it was going to feel afterwards as well. Oh, well, yes. apart from how, yeah, apart from how they felt, I just didn't want to have sex afterwards. But isn't the joke when right? they come round when you're lying there in sort of like hospital, you've got your sort of stitches, and they says, "Now, have you considered contraception?" Yeah. Yeah, just not doing it, you know, it is, <laughs> isn't it so untimely though? But I, th I think that is the danger though, isn't it? Because we had our two babies very close together and we didn't mean to, but I think the thing is when you start having sex again, it's such a surprise, you forget about contraception. Mm. I was terrified. Oh, maybe that's what I was scared. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of women that are afraid to, to have, to have sex. sex again. Yeah, yeah. I, I was very nervous because I had stitches, and as lots of women do, mm. and you, you're always worried that something's going to, you know, break. pop or break yeah. or or whatever. But I mean, I think what do they say? Six weeks after after you've had your baby, you can. I remember we tried it, but just went forget it. This mm. isn't. I think it was all too. Also, you're tired. As well, aren't they? That's you know, the thing. That's if you had a choice, thing. sleep yeah. or sex, what would you it's go at that point? It's almost like you, no. your body was invaded by this like growing baby. You just want your body to yourself, yeah, almost, don't yeah. you? It's so like no, nothing, no poking around. Yeah. Please, thank you. <laughs> but you know, I think there might be a difference as well between um, men and women who have a, the pregnancy is an unintentional one. And then it's the fear that's sort of like, we didn't want that one, we can't do it again in case we have another accident. Oh, and I think that must affect sort of men and women if the man didn't want it and she got pregnant and vice versa. Yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, I'm just thinking back and I, I have to say, all it was to me was about sleep actually. It wasn't so much fear mm. of having sex again. It was just that, you know, I, so I used tired. to feign sleep, you know. Yeah. I, <laughs> or, you know or try and go to bed at Isn't different times so you'd get no little yeah. <laughs> tap on the shoulder because it was just, you know, I just wanted to sleep more than anything yeah. else. I, I don't know if my experience is um, something lots of women have, but I did have a very difficult birth and, you know, more stitches than anyone would want to know about. And I was quite worried about having sex again and how it would feel. But what got us back together again to be intimate was he took me away for the weekend and like all my worries about oh I might need surgery before I can have sex again and all those kind of, I'm seriously thinking about it you know what do I look like down there and how awful yeah, is it yeah. he took me away for a lovely romantic weekend again and we started having sex again and I think often that what solves a the problem for a lot of that is great yeah. Yeah. that is great it sounds perfect doesn't Just it you're you taken too. away from yeah, the whole mother, scenario the mother's sort of role has gone you're back to how you were before children yeah, mm. yeah. and Make it was it really good that's a lovely idea a friend of mine had the same experience she said she was feeling really peculiar about having sex again and worrying about you know what she looked like and her husband took her off to Vienna for the weekend and they were sorted they didn't need to go to <laughs> hospital for surgery but know. I wonder if because they must think the same the guys must think the same I wonder 
what she looks like. I wonder if she, if it's going to feel the yeah. same. Yeah. And yeah. I think because they really probably yeah. we we go through this kind of trauma, and I bet they do as well. Yeah. Although mine came out of the sunroof. Maybe you think it's easier? <laughs> I was wondering actually whether it's easier for women who've had cesareans to think about having sex again because you don't have that fear of what what is it like. No, you don't. Except I've got this horrible fold now where the scar is. And I, I can't get rid of it. And I felt grotesque afterwards. After I'd given birth, I still I felt like a beached whale. And I didn't feel attractive yeah. to you my see, husband. It's, it's, it's not just kind of like that, that sort of part of it. It's your hot body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the... The, the huge boobs. The huge boobs. The, like the flabby, flab, you know, floppy yeah. <coughs> stomach and everything. It's not feeling good about yourself, I mm. suppose, entirely. That's true because you go for, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, when I was pregnant, I felt great and I, I, I ate healthily and I felt like I'd never, mm. you know, it was really that blooming time and I, yeah. I felt, you know, really attractive and <laughs> God knows what I looked like, but I felt it. No, but you know, you're a bit sort of a wreck, aren't you? Yes, you go yeah. from blooming and lovely and ripe to, you know, sort of leaking and flabby and, <laughs> yeah. and you know, dead tired. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's a, a little bit in, you know, in our own minds as well that maybe we're not as desirable or yeah. as desirable. Well, maybe as we're not. I mean, let's face it, maybe we're not. My husband ran off with somebody yeah. else. I mean, maybe we're not as desirable when we've had babies. No, it's a bit of a sad truth, but it's, isn't yeah, it? In all honesty. Do you yeah. know, although I remember, no, I, maybe there's a, a short time. I remember after I had my daughter, she was about a, a year or so, and I, I looked better than I ever had before. I'd lost some weight, and I just thought, wow, I've got everything. You know, I've got this young baby on my hip. Yeah. I'm, you know, just, I, I think I was still under, just under 30 or something. And I thought, well, you know, and I had a great haircut, and I, everything, I actually felt baby more attractive than I ever you know, I'm a had before, because I'd done yeah. everything. Yeah, and I was fertile yeah. after. Very after, in now, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. Sign a baby. But you yeah. know when you said about going away for a weekend I think now my children are 11 I think from the time that you have your children you give your life to them you do yeah. I mean you try and fit it in with your own life but actually most everything you do every decision you make you have to consider the children first and Steve and I now even even to this day do have little breaks on our own even for a long weekend and, and you do need it and mm. that's when we rediscover our sex life. Yes, exactly. And, and why you fell in love with that person in the yeah. first place. Exactly. Yeah. It's absolutely vital. Because for that couple of days, you're not giving all your attention to your kids. You don't have yeah. to think of them before you make mm. the next decision. Yeah. You know, I make sure my sister looks after them yeah. or, or someone that I trust. Mm. Yes, you can be completely mm. irresponsible. You can stay out all night. Yeah. You can sort of... Yeah. Anything you want. It's, it's, it's in the morning. I tell you yes. what, being in the middle of a divorce, I have kind of, you know, I have got my sex life back with somebody else. Because, you know, my husband, <laughs> my husband has the kids, uh, you know, every other weekend. I feel like I'm in my oh, 20s. Of course, you've yeah. got your freedom every yeah, it weekend. Feels like, oh, wow, we're going down the disco. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the other trick is that the midday nap, you know, when they get to that lovely age, you're about 12 months, 16 months, and they sleep for two hours during the day. Mm. I remember that became the, the, a period of afternoon delight, really. Because, <laughs> They <laughs> nap and, and off you go. So it's, yeah. it's funny. It, I, I felt that, that for us it changed everything. It, you know, it wasn't night time. It wasn't early morning. You know, a, a lovely leisurely Sunday morning. It was. It was nap time. Oh, that's <laughs> that's nap time was unusual so as well. It's, yeah, it's like you feel nice. really naughty yeah. then. It's like stealing that moment. <laughs> Has any of you um, been surprised by the children coming in mid flow? Yes, once. <laughs> Me too. Yes, <laughs> once. That's well, awesome. I don't know what they saw. Have you then? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it's been both of them, and they've stood either side of the bed. <laughs> oh and, no. And you don't know because you're kind of busy and, <laughs> and otherwise engaged, and suddenly these little faces appeared that at the time didn't know what was going on. You know, <laughs> thankfully, and <laughs> and they go, "Mummy." Can I have a drink? And you're oh! <laughs> <laughs> and Steve, it was the great thing was feeling Steve from that go to that. <laughs> well, there you go. It's hysterical. Isn't it, really? <laughs>